Today, more on mortgage stress and defaults. Hello again, I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. We got half-year results from both the NAB and ANZ this week, and neither were that impressive, with profits being supported by lower provisions and reductions in deposit account interest rates, plus pressures on new mortgage loan rates. NAB in particular highlighted the higher costs of short-term funding, as shown in this chart. And if this does not change, they suggest that their net interest margin would be cut by between two and three basis points ahead. And this will put more upward pressure on mortgage rates down the track. But of more immediate significance are the trends in 90 day plus delinquency rates. NAB included this chart, which shows that overall delinquencies are higher now, up six basis points over the past six months the balances at risk are growing larger. They also show the movement by state and that the highest default levels are in Western Australia and Queensland, but there are rises also in the other states too. They showed a similar trend for consumer credit with once again 90 day plus defaults rising. And here is the chart. Now turning to ANZ, we see a similar trend with WA worst hit. In fact, WA is 13% of their mortgage portfolio, but 30% of 90 day plus defaults and half of portfolio losses. But again, we see losses in other states also on the rise. They say that recent loans, perhaps written under higher underwriting standards, are performing a little better, but there are some significant issues in older loans. And Gemworth, the lender's mortgage insurer, who underwrites loans above 80% or perhaps 70% LVR in some cases, also reported higher losses again. The delinquency rate increased slightly from 0.48% in the first quarter of 17 to 0.49% in the first quarter of 18, driven mainly by Western Australia and New South Wales. South Australia and Queensland experienced lower delinquency rates, whilst the delinquency rate in Victoria increased marginally. All states experienced a decline in new delinquencies, they said, with the exception of Western Australia. Delinquencies in the mining areas are showing signs of improving, but in the non-mining regions there are indications of a softening in cure rates, in particular in New South Wales and Western Australia. And they said net claims incurred remain stable during the quarter at $37.4 million, but the loss ratio in 1Q18 was 55.9%, up from 34.8% a year ago. So all these three sets of results point to a rising level of mortgage default. No surprise given flat incomes, rising costs and big mortgages. And this is where our mortgage stress analysis can provide an early warning of trouble ahead. Often stress is 18 months to two years before a default event occurs. Now we released our mortgage stress analysis to April 2018. Across Australia, more than 936,000 households are estimated now to be in mortgage stress compared with 956,000 last month. This equates to 30.1% of unoccupied borrowing households. In addition, more than 21,600 of these are in severe stress, up more than 500 from last month. And we estimate that more than 55,600 households now risk 30 day default in the next 12 months. We expect bank portfolio losses to be around 2.8 basis points, although losses in Western Australia will be higher at around 5 basis points. And we continue to see the impact of flat wages growth, rising living costs and higher real mortgage rates. Our analysis uses the DFA core market model, which combines information from our 52,000 household surveys, public data from the RBA, ABS and APRA, and private data from lenders and aggregators. The data is current to the end of April 2018. We analyse household cash flow based on real incomes, outgoings and mortgage repayments, rather than using an arbitrary 30% of income. And households are defined as stressed when net income or cash flow does not cover ongoing costs. They may or may not have access to other available assets and some have paid ahead, but households in mild stress have little leeway in their cash flows, whereas those in severe stress are unable to meet repayments from current income. In both cases, households manage this deficit by cutting back on spending, putting more on credit cards, and seeking to refinance, restructure, or even sell their home. 
And those in severe stress are more likely to be seeking hardship assistance and are often forced to sell. The forces which are lifting mortgage stress levels remain largely the same. In cash flow terms, we see households having to cope with rising living costs, noticeably childcare, school fees and fuel, whilst real incomes continue to fall and underemployment remains high. Households have larger mortgages thanks to the strong rise in home prices, especially in the main eastern state centres, and now prices are slipping. While mortgage interest rates remain quite low for owner-occupied borrowers, those with interest-only loans or investment loans have seen significant rises. We expect some upward pressure on real mortgage rates in coming months as international funding pressures mount, a potential for local rate rises and margin pressure on the banks thanks to a higher bank bill swap rate. Probability of default extends our mortgage stress analysis by overlaying economic indicators such as employment, future wage growth and CPI changes. And our core market model also examines the potential of portfolio risk of loss in basis points and value terms. Losses are likely to be higher among more affluent households contrary to the popular belief that affluent households are well protected. We continue to see the number of households rising and the quantum is now economically significant. We think things will get more severe, especially as household debt continues to climb to new record levels. Mortgage lending is still growing up two to three times income, and this is not sustainable, and we're expecting lending growth to continue to moderate in the months ahead as underwriting standards are tightened and home prices fall further. The latest household debt to income ratio is now at a record 188.6. Regional analysis shows that New South Wales has 262,000 households in stress, Victoria has 256,000 households in stress, Queensland 175,000 and Western Australia 128,000. The probability of default over the next 12 months rose with around 10,500 in Western Australia, around 10,300 in Queensland, 13,800 in Victoria and 14,800 in New South Wales. The largest financial losses relating to bank write-offs reside in New South Wales at $1.4 billion from owner-occupied borrowers and $936 million from Victoria from owner-occupied borrowers, which equates to 2.1 and 2.76 basis points respectively. Losses are likely to be higher in Western Australia at 5 basis points, which equates to $696 million from owner-occupied borrowers. Now here is a fuller regional breakdown for you to read at your leisure. And here are the top postcodes sorted by the highest number of households in mortgage stress. So to round this out, it's worth saying again that households who are in financial difficulty should not ignore the signs, though many do. And trying to refinance to solve the problem often ends up just postponing the inevitable. Step one is to drop a budget so you can see where the money is coming and going. From our research, only half of households have any sort of a budget. This means that you can then make decisions about what is really important and what can be foregone. Select and prioritize. 
Step two is to talk to your lender, as they have a legal obligation to assist in cases of hardship. Yet many households avoid having that conversation, hoping the problem will cure itself. I have to say, in the current low income growth, high cost environment, that is unlikely. And remember that mortgage rates are likely to rise in the months ahead. And that takes me to step three. Work out what would happen if mortgage rates rose by, let's say, half or 1%. Pass that across your budget and examine the impact. Then you will really know where you stand. If you like what you've seen here today, please like the post and add a comment or a question. I read them all. If you want to join the growing band of subscribers who receive alerts when we release new posts, do subscribe now. And I want to thank those who have already subscribed. I really appreciate your support and participation. I'm Martin North, the Principal Analyst at Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.